that's something else to say is happy to also be in the chain here. Yeah. <laughs> Boot me out. <laughs> all right. Um, for all the slides that Tion didn't use, I've got tons of them. So if you missed the slides that he didn't have, then I'll make up for it. <laughs> Thank you for coming along to the Hayes special edition of TalkJS. <laughs> Bit behind the times. Uh, my name's Chris Leanett. I work for JLT. We've been around longer than electricity. Um, basically, we started off smuggling opium out of Hong Kong and Shanghai, and things have gotten better since then, apparently. <laughs> but, yeah, it's really interesting working for a company that's been around for a very long time. This is not me. <laughs> I have to get this out of the way, because it happens if I don't. This might be me. I'm not too sure. I'm here in front of you today because I'm annoyed. Um, being annoyed seems to prompt me to do stuff, and yeah. Back before Adobe Air even existed, <laughs> the internet actually looked like things like this. This is still live, which is really scary. Um, everyone in the 90s wanted a website. They didn't know what they wanted it for, but they knew that they needed one right away, so that's why we exist, basically. Um, and it was awesome, it was a really cool era. Everyone was happy, everyone had their own site. <laughs> Skipping ahead past Adobe Air, um, these things came along and it was great. You've got all the apps that you could possibly need right there and anything else, there's the web. What more could you possibly want? Um, if you really like a website, then you can actually save it to your home screen. How awesome! Here's the, uh, the spec for how to do that. All you have to do is tap the icon down the bottom that no one knows about. <laughs> Find another icon in that list, and you know it looks really user-friendly. And look at this down on the bottom right corner. We've got our own custom app icon. How awesome is that? We're just like native. So these three, three really easy steps, just like this, and you can have your own app icon. Fantastic. <laughs> Here's a graph demonstrating how many people have done this. <laughs> so we've built something. We now have moved ahead a bit, so let's ask Siri for some help and see if we can find an app store, please, Siri. Um, <laughs> I'll just go there myself, it's all right. Once you've written your native app, because native is really cool and awesome and native, um, how do we actually get people to know about it? You've got the app store, and app stores at the moment use carousels, and carousels are awesome, aren't they? <laughs> carousels are just the solution. No, they're not. Um, app discoverability is really, really bad. This is basically, you know, Anyone either laughing themselves to tears, probably, because they realise that no one can actually find where their app is. So what are we developers meant to do about this? App banners. How awesome. <laughs> I've built the app. I'm going to make sure the world knows about it. Um, I'm not even going to comment on the cricket score, but it was fantastic. <laughs> The problem is when you get into this, you're entering dangerous territory because you're obscuring what's actually there on the screen. So here's the usable space, which is about 50% of the screen is still there once we take out all the rubbish. What is great about ESPN is they've got the app banner up there. Immediately below that is their own inline ad advertising the same app. So just in case you missed the app banner, <laughs> here's another one. The Atlantic is so cool, they actually wrote two <laughs> native apps. The actual content's a bit limited, but you know, at least it made it onto the screen. If you tilt your phone on the side, maybe it's not so there anymore. At least I, I still know I'm on the right publication, at least, so you know. It could be worse. Oh, here's worse. Slideshare are fantastic. <laughs> The first thing you do when you try to load anything on your mobile is you get an interstitial. 
which is just like this. And how much usable content is there? <laughs> Strangely enough, taking away every last bit of the screen real estate to flog your product is something that people do not like. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Now, this has been the case for a long time. Google have caught on to it recently. This is their example on the right, which is actually of an interstitial. I find it funny because it doesn't actually take up the entire screen like every other one does, but <laughs> we'll pretend that's normal. Um, Google did a study into these because they were a great practitioner of it themselves. They found that 69% of people, when they see an interstitial, give up immediately. So they're trying to get your site, you give them a full page ad, and they'll go somewhere else. Uh, so it's not really good for trying to get people to look at what you're doing. So their solution is app banners, yes. Their solution isn't that bad. This is a demonstration of the uh, new version they've got in Chrome 42. Um, it has a bit of logic behind it, so it doesn't actually appear every single time. But the problem with it is you're still in that same situation. Um, quick show of hands, who has actually bookmarked a site for the home screen of their phone at any point? We've got a couple of people. We're amongst, I mean, we're the power users. We don't exist in the real world. Um, even amongst us, there's basically a handful of us that actually do it. I did it because I did it just to see if it could be done. <laughs> it's not great. Um, this guy's not around anymore, so I'll just update <laughs> that a bit. That's better. Different countries, same reaction. <laughs> Thank you, Google. Now that we've convinced people to download our app, um, here's a picture of someone who might be me but isn't, and slides that aren't mine, some, some other conference, but I'll pretend they are mine. Um, eight out of 10 branded apps get uninstalled after one use. So we've put all this effort into taking up your real estate and ruining your web experience so you can just uninstall the thing. And then 90% of the app downloads are generated from the top 10% of the store. Native apps do not work very well if you're trying to get reach. They have particular use, but the web is the web. That's what most of our things are for. Unless you've got a really particular market for it, you have to be really careful. And if app banners were the only thing that took up your screen real estate, then you might be all right, but great, here's a cookie notice. And the law changed so you don't even need these anymore. But if you have anything remotely UK, then everyone's still in it because it's just a really bad habit they've picked up. And again, you know, usable real estate is not great. Um, but okay, we've got app banners, we've got cookie notices. It's not too bad, but everyone's <laughs> desperate for you to like them. Install our app, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, visit our sponsor. <laughs> It's basically like, you know, you're trying to do something and someone just rushes up to you and wants to give you a hug while you're trying to do it. They're just so needy. They need your attention. The web at the moment has turned into a three-year-old. The, the top right-hand corner link there is very good. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no, the right-hand corner. Right -hand corner. Turn it off. Turn. You can't actually do that until you get rid of the uh, thing. So you have to... Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you actually hit that, you get another thing saying, wow, you're a racist, I can't believe you admitted that. Now, if you've kept up with the news lately, um, there might be some news somewhere on there. Uh, let's try another site. No. Okay, there's a headline somewhere in there. Um, in iOS 9, which was released today, um, Apple actually released some, well, they're calling it ad blocking, but it's actually an API designed to block um, basically any given element on a web page. Most of it's come out in the way of blocking scripts for um, trackers and the like. Um, but the effect is to stop this kind of thing from happening. And this is PC Mag basically saying that, you know, you don't want your screen. Um, there so you can read the content. You really like it when we take up most of it. Um, and the problem is basically this. This is a marketer's idea of how engineering works. <laughs> and this is pretty much the situation that we live in. Um, we know that we need to flog our product somehow, 
but the way it's actually being executed is just really, really nasty. So the question is, how do we actually do this? The way that we get around it is somewhere in between. Apple are trying with their bookmarks to make them more presentable. This is not the same as a bookmark where it's just a menu with nothing there. It's a little bit more elevated than that in a way. Um, as it is, most people don't really know how to bookmark on a mobile anyway because the menu's hidden. But even if they get there, it's a little bit friendlier than the home page because how many times, I mean, we've already seen not many people really put those sites on their, their home screens at all. Um, so we're elevating it just that little bit. I think that's pretty much where these things need to live. But you just need to be nice and actually have some respect for your users at some point. Fight back against the marketing people um, because otherwise we're going to end up in this kind of situation. Um, There is no real answer to this at the moment because no one really knows. We're fighting the problem of no discoverability of app stores, but you know, just be a little bit nicer and hopefully everyone will be happier. Thank you. <laughs> now, as much as I'm flogging my slideshare stuff, these slides are not actually up there. So <laughs> you can see other things that I've done. Does anyone have any questions or... Um, support for app banners or anything? No, thank you.